This video is being prepared for week three lab section of Engineering 1332 at Oklahoma State University. And in this uh, lab section this week, we're going to be looking at uh, creating features, okay? Um, and features using fairly simple sketches this week. And then the following week, we're going to become incredibly good at using the sketching tool. Um, but what we're going to look at this week in this video would be more details on extrudes, including the way we start and stop extrudes, blind through all, mid-plane, two-sided, those very uh, thin features, those various kinds of extrudes. We will look at the whole wizard. We'll look at revolved solids and cuts, fillets and chamfers, linear patterns, angular patterns, mirroring, reference geometry for creating utility axes and points and planes, a swept boss and base, lofted boss base, uh, and then some very, very fast looks at shells, drafts, and domes. So that's the intent of the video and lab for this week. Let's move this list out of the way and get started. And what I'm going to do is use fairly, geometry, fairly simple geometry to communicate most of these ideas. And so I'm going to create just some geometry that I'm going to use over and over again. I'm going to create a part. Okay. I intend to work in millimeters, so let me go intentionally set my units under options. And it brings up this dialog box. You can't see the top of it, so I'll drag that down. And under document properties, units, I see that I'm set to inches. I'm going to go ahead and choose to work in millimeters. And I will then click at the bottom of this dialog. I'll click on the OK button, and I'll be working in millimeters. And what I'm going to do is create, um, very, very quickly, a fairly simple part. We saw this kind of stuff last week, extruded boss base. I'll sketch on the front plane. And I'm going to create a rectangle. I'll attach it to the origin. And drag. And there's my rectangle. And I will smart dimension this to be... 100 by, I'm a little out of room there, I'm going to bring this down here, it doesn't matter, by 200, and there is my part, or my sketch, and I will extrude it out to 10 millimeters for what I'm wanting to do today is a perfectly fine dimension, and so I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to do another extrude, and I'm going to sketch on this face of this part. And I don't actually have to view it square, and so I'm just going to leave it skewed just to show that you can. And I'm going to sketch a circle, and then I'm going to sketch another circle, and I want to put it at the same center, so when I move my mouse... Uh, it highlights that dot in orange. Oops, I thought I was creating a circle. I wasn't. We'll create another circle at that point and drag it to be somewhat smaller. And so I will now accept that. Uh, I guess I really ought to. I won't always smart dimension everything, but I'll dimension that circle by clicking on it and pulling away. And it's showing the diameter of 53 why don't we make that a 50 as a nice round number and then I will smart dimension this circle as a 30 and now what I haven't done yet is locate the center of the circle so let me go ahead and dimension that and so I will dimension smart dimension from the center of the circle to the origin and I will dimension in a horizontal dimension let's just make that a nice round 40 and then I will dimension from center of the circle to the origin in let's see it's not giving me that vertical dimension let me go ahead and go square to it that might be what it takes And so I will smart dimension from the origin 
to that point and now it's giving it to me and I want that vertical dimension and we'll make that a 50 and my sketch is fully defined now and I will accept accept my sketch and now it knows that uh, I've got this segment that I could be extruding there are some other options that I could do under select contours if I click in this box I could select to extrude that part and not this outer part but I really don't want that so I'm going to delete that and it's showing the yellow it's showing the part that I'm going to extrude I'll pull this out so that it looks about the way I want it to look and that's a distance of 44 but let's go with 45 a nice round number and so I have added that feature to my part and now what I want to do is add another feature to this part and it's going to be a little bit uh, strange uh, let me see exactly how I want to do that yes you'll, you'll see the feature in the end but uh, let me prepare to create the part the uh, feature and what I'm going to do is an extruded boss base. And now the planes that I have to sketch on, it's asking me to select a plane. I have the planes that exist around my rectangle, and there are six of them. And I also have a plane at the top of my uh, circular boss. Those are the only planes I have. Um, and I also have my datum planes. Now I can find my datum planes, the existing ones, by going over here. And so I could sketch, still sketch on the front plane, the top plane, the right plane. And I think what I'm going to do is sketch on the top plane. Somewhat of an arbitrary choice. And let me now view perpendicular. And the geometry that I want to create is just, and I'm going to use the line tool, and it's just going to be an odd-shaped series of lines. We'll make that one horizontal and vertical and then I'm going to go at an angle and then horizontal and notice all these lines that are running out things turn orange when I point to them those are called constraints and we'll talk about that a bit more next week oops I accidentally turned that into a radius I'm going to stop with that line and now go horizontal and vertical that's the geometry that I want to extrude and I'm not going to dimension it. I'm just going to leave it undimensioned. I'm probably, in general, not going to allow you to do that. Uh, I'm going to ask you to dimension these things, but I'm going to choose not to this time. And I'm going to accept my sketch. And I started this with a boss extrude. And let's look at where my sketch was. Here's my sketch. My sketch was done on, let's go view these planes on the top plane. You can see that plane highlighting. I'm going to move away. There's the top plane. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to extrude this geometry, but I don't want to start here. I want to start in about maybe 10 or 15 millimeters. And so I will show you now some alternatives using the word from. So, and then there is the direction one and then there's a direction two so most of the time virtually all the time we will start our extrudes from the sketch plane and we intentionally put the sketch plane where we want it so that we can extrude from the sketch plane but every now and then we want to extrude from a different place not from the sketch plane I want m I might want to extrude starting at a particular surface or starting at a particular point, or I might want to simply, this is what I really wanted to show you, I might want to start at an offset from my original sketch plane. So I'm going to click offset, and I'm going to type in, let's see what 15 millimeters looks like. Okay, do you see how my yellow portion of the extrude has moved away from the sketch plane? With this offset of 15 millimeters, the geometry that I'm going to create won't start at the sketch plane, it'll start 15 millimeters to the right of the sketch plane. Or, if I go change the direction right here, it'll start 15 millimeters left of the sketch plane and extends toward the right. I'm going to reverse that one more time. 
I let it start 15 millimeters away from the sketch plane. And now let's look at our direction one things. Right now we're set up to do a blind extrude. Uh, let's get this rotated about so we can see that. This is set up to do a blind extrude and it would simply stop wherever I tell it to stop. We could go though through all. Let's look at what that does. And it pretty much stops at the end of the part as it exists right now. Through all in a solid is a little bit strange. Okay, up to next, let's look at what that does. It stops at this surface, okay, because it stops when it hits the next surface. Um, let me accept that. And there's my feature. It's starting at a place where I don't have a sketch plane because it's offset from a sketch plane, and it extends until it hits the part, and we do not see it extending through the part in any way. I'm going to go play with it a little bit. And I'm going to right click on it and go to edit definition. And now I can change my mind on various things. Rather than up, up to next, I'm going to say up to surface. And I'm going to stop when I hit, let's see if I can make it stop when I hit this outer surface. No, it's stopping there. Let's try the inner surface. Unfortunately, because that's all one surface, it won't stop there. I'd have to have separated this into multiple surfaces. That's not doing precisely what I wanted to show you, so let me stop it at this surface. And you see that the part will extend from this surface to that one. Now, up to surface could let me choose this one and stop it there. And up to next, in this case, would do exactly the same thing. Okay, what are some of the other choices? And we may come back to some of those. Uh, Mid-plane, uh, offset from surface. We've already done that. We did that last week. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and click on offset from surface. And I'm going to click on this surface. And I want to be offset 20 millimeters from that surface. So looking down on it, I've used an offset from surface to start it, and I've used an offset from this surface to end it. That would be my solid. And we can see the solid passing through the part. We get, by starting it and stopping at different places, we get different features. And let's see, I haven't done undos very often. I'm going to move up to the undo and undo the change that I just made and keep that feature right there. Another thing that I could do with this existing feature, so I'll try to get our money's worth out of that one feature, is let's go back to Edit Feature, and let's look at, uh, let's see. It's actually not showing what I want. What I wanted to do was an extrude thin. We'll come back to that. Okay, uh, I actually got interrupted for a moment, and uh, the part got messed up, and I've actually sort of recreated the part to get it close to back where I was, and now let me show you what I was wanting to show you a moment ago. I want to show you an extrude thin, and something I didn't actually understand is once you've created a part as a solid thing, it no longer offers you the option to come back and turn it into a thin thing. So I'm going to create a thin feature for you, and I'm going to start with an extrude, and I'm going to draw on this face of the part, and I will go in view perpendicular, and I'm going to draw just again an arbitrary thing with a set of lines. I'll draw a triangle and accept that. I'm not going to dimension it because that's not what I'm really teaching today. I click on that. I rotate out, and we see some interesting things when I rotate out. It's starting at the sketch plane, which is the edge of the part, and it's wanting to go this way. I want it to go the other way. And so I'm going to change the direction, direction 1, and extrude that way. I'm going to go and offset that from the sketch plane by about 40 millimeters. Uh, still need to, and I'm offsetting the starting point. I want the offset to go from the other direction, 
and I will turn this one into an up to next and so it'll connect into that circular feature very nicely but I want it to become a thin feature and uh, that thin feature uh, let's go with a dimension of two millimeters let's see and it's not it's no longer showing the preview and I'm not sure why ah, I scroll down now it is showing the preview and I will well let's just notice what it's going to do for me on this thin feature it's not going to fill in the entire triangle when it does the extrude instead it's going to take the sketch and extend well, let's go back perpendicular to the sketch it's easier to see it will extend from the sketch outward two millimeters and create this thin geometry instead of solid filled geometry if I turn off the thin we can see now it's going to create a solid again I'm going to go back to thin and we have a choice of one direction mid plane which says, and let me zoom in a bit, now we can see that it is making a 10 millimeter thickness, a 2 millimeter thickness, but it's going to either side of my sketch. Uh, I could also do uh, one direction, and that's going to the outside. If I flip it, it will extrude thin to the inside. And we're going to see this one direction, mid plane, two direction thing. Uh, in the direction one thing in just a little while we'll come back to that okay but you get the idea of thin and so I will go ahead and create this as a thin feature uh, my system is giving me a funny looking cursor I don't know if you can see that I'll pause for a minute and hopefully it will start responding to me okay it's responding now and I will accept this feature and remember I've offset it from my sketch plane 40 millimeters I've gone up to the next surface and I've done a thin and when we look at the part and rotate it around we can see it does not start at the sketch plane it is a thin hollow feature that has gone up to the next surface um, let's see let me do one other just to show you the mid plane are the two sided extrudes and so I'm going to do another extruded boss base and sketch on this plane viewing perpendicular come on there we go viewing perpendicular again I'm just going to do a very simple sketch I think I'll just do a rectangle this time uh, won't let it snap to anything there's my sketch it knows I'm doing an extrude it's extruding from the sketch plane blind and so direction one I'm gonna say let's extrude this thing 40 millimeters but I don't want to go one direction only I want to go mid plane mid plane says take my sketch plane make the part the feature 40 millimeters long as I requested but go 20 millimeters to one side of the sketch and 20, mil 20 millimeters to the other side of the sketch. If I change this to 100 millimeters, it extends equally on either side of the sketch. So it treats the sketch as the mid plane of the new feature. Let me go back instead of mid plane. Let me go and, and say it is to be blind at let's go with about 30 millimeters. And that takes care of direction one. Let's look at direction two. If I wish, I can extend 75 millimeters blind in direction 2. Or in direction 2, I've got all of the other options, such as through all, up to vertex, up to surface, offset from the surface. So in direction 2, what I'm going to do is let me go offset from surface. Which surface? This surface. And I want to offset from that surface 30 millimeters. And let me click away. Let's see what we've got. And I'll scroll it. Maybe it'll make it appear. Uh, let's go ahead and accept it. Oops. It says a rebuild error. Okay, I think I probably know what's happening. I think I probably need to reverse that offset. That's what it was. It was trying to go the wrong direction to do that offset. 
click on reverse offset and accept it and now I have the feature and the feature was created on this plane and it extends independently one amount here and a different amount here okay I think I've probably exhausted uh, my list of details on extrude we've done blind we've done through all I'll through we'll do a through all cut uh, we'll go do an up to n we did an up to next mid plane two sides we've done all of that okay let me do a cut rather than a solid play with that a little bit and so what I'm going to do is sketch on uh, this surface oh, let's see let me do an extrude cut sketching on this surface let's view perpendicular and what I want to do is maybe pass have the potential of passing through a few things and so again I'm just gonna draw a very simple shape I think in this case I'm gonna draw a circle and I'll accept that as my sketch it knows I'm going to do a cut if I do a through all cut then it's going to cut through everything that exists right now including cutting through this piece entirely and cutting through a segment of that one let me go ahead and accept it and now we can see the geometry that we got that circular cut has gone through everything that that it could reach uh, if I wanted to though I'm gonna go right click edit feature and instead of going through all let's see what up to next does and it really probably given where my sketch is okay it cuts through the first first it starts to cut on this surface and ends the cut on this one and does not cut through the part behind it let's play with some of the others right click edit feature instead of up to next let's try up to surface and what I'm gonna do is click on this interior surface right here let's see what that does and I will accept that and it did what I expected it cut through here it cut through these surfaces but it did not cut through the surface that I clicked on it stopped when it reached that surface so you can see some of the options for starting and stopping cuts and extrudes okay now we transition away from all of these various extrudes and the next thing on my list of things to look at is a thing called the hole wizard and so I will come over here under features to the hole wizard and the whole wizard is a set of tools for creating lots and lots of different kinds of standard size holes now obviously I could make a hole in a part simply by sketching a circle and doing an extrude cut I've already done that kind of a hole but the whole wizard really is for the kinds of holes used in the design of machines that are created by tools or they're created to fit certain size fasteners and so we've got several different hole types, including a counter bore hole, a counter sunk hole, a just a standard drilled hole, a hole that would be used with a tap to put threads inside of a part, a uh, tapered tap, or a sketched hole where you can create whatever, or they call it legacy hole. It's whatever sort of kind of hole you want to create. What we're going to do, and we'll play with several of these holes, I'm just going to use this standard hole I am going to use metric dimensions we have other options such uh, as DIN ISO JIS those kinds of things I'm going to stay with ANSI metric and I want a hole that comes from a standard drill as opposed to other kinds of things we'll go a standard drill size and I'm going to ask it to drill a 12 millimeter now let's go ahead and change it. We'll make it a 13 millimeter hole. And I want the hole to go all the way through. Okay, so we have the option of blind to go to a certain depth. We have all of the kinds of options we've seen for when to stop the feature. Uh, but I'm going to go with through all. 
and I finished the type of hole but now I need to position the hole so I'll click on this position tab and it says select the face where you want to place the hole create holes on multiple faces click the button below okay so I'm going to create a hole on this big bottom face and now I want to locate it at that location now that's nice that it's showing me that uh, there's a boss on the other side and so now I want to locate this hole and it says use dimensions and other sketch tools to position the whole center or centers and I'm only going to create one hole right now and I'm going to go ahead and view perpendicular to my hole creation plane and let's see first of all let me just drag this hole I really want to put it down here and now I'm going to go with smart dimension I'll click on the center of the hole and I will click on this edge and I will pull down to here and let's go ahead and make that a 20 and then I will click on center of the hole and this edge come on uh, didn't do it smart dimension click on the center of the hole click on this edge oh I'm clicking on the same edge I clicked on before sorry this edge bottom edge um, I'm not sure what's happening let's try this again click on center of the hole and the bottom edge okay I don't know why that didn't work before uh, let's go with a 15 seems like a nice round number and so I have located the hole I'll accept I'll click the check on the dimension I've located the hole with the position I've created the type and now I'm going to accept this hole and let's see what we get and we've chose a uh, just a standard drilled hole and so when I click on accept we get a standard drilled hole uh, let's see when I point to it it tells me that it is a 13 millimeter diameter hole so uh, the information about how it was created is stored with the hole let's go change the hole a little bit right click on it edit feature and let me select instead a counterboard hole I'm not sure why it changes the diameter to 10 millimeters when I clicked on counterboard let's see if the a 12 will fit uh, looks like that's all it's giving me in this list scroll that up and make a little more room no, that's all it's giving me so we're gonna go with that 10 millimeter counter counterboard hole uh, and it's gonna go through the rest of the part I will accept that and now what I have is a hole that is started with a cone that would let me put a uh, counterboard type bolt into this hole um, I think that's really if I go right click edit feature we could do a countersunk if we wanted to we could explore all of these others I don't think I'm there's really very much to show you uh, other than just go play around with these and try creating different kinds of holes and so I think that's probably enough on the hole wizard uh, we will accept that and uh, move on to some other kinds of features so let's take a look at creating uh, some reference geometry that would be useful in uh, creating um, a bit more sophisticated features and so reference geometry the one I want to look at today in particular is creating planes because we always need sketch planes sometimes we need sketch planes at weird locations this lets us create them so I'm going to click on the word plane we have a first reference second reference third reference it says select references and constraints and so the first plane that I'm going to create is using say this surface and when I click on it uh, it has already selected an offset surface of 10 millimeters let's change that to 20 let's flip the direction and so it's very easy to create one uh, plane which is 
offset and parallel to an existing plane. That's probably the easiest one. Um, and so if I then accept that plane, it would then become available. It's called plane number one. It would become available for doing sketches. So if I wanted to do a sketch, I could select that plane number one. I could select it multiple places. And actually, it's already selected. So I don't have to unselect it. I'm going to abandon this sketch. Not actually going to use it. And I'm going to delete plane number one because I want to go create some other planes. Okay, so plane number one is gone. Um, let me go back and go to Features and Reference Geometry, Plane. And now what I'm going to do is select on this edge. Let's zoom in a little bit and select the edge. So I want a plane that will pass through that edge. Uh, coincident, I could make it perpendicular to that edge, but I don't want to. Let's go back with coincident. Now this isn't enough information to fully create this plane, so I'm going to select as a second reference this plane and say that I would like my new plane, let's zoom out a little bit, to be at an angle of 25 degrees. And so my new plane now passes through this edge and it's, it's at an angle of 25 degrees from this face. And so my plane is now fully defined and I will accept that and it exists in my model. And if I wanted to drill a hole through, say, this feature perpendicular to this plane, I could sketch a hole, sketch a, a cut, whatever, uh, use this as my sketch plane and do interesting work with it. I will delete this one. Uh, where's my delete? Let's see, escape. Right click. Uh, why am I not seeing the delete? Am I just, ah, oh, there it is. Okay. And so that feature is gone. And now let's create a plane a uh, different way. Reference geometry, create a plane. I'm going to accept this point. And it gives me a plane that passes through that point. And I would like that plane to then be related to this surface at an angle of 20 degrees. Let's see. Not letting me do that. Okay, let me do it. Let me X out of it. Reference geometry. We'll do it a little bit differently. Reference geometry. And a lot of different ways you can create planes. I promise you I'm not an expert at it. Let me show you. A, a, a three points make up a plane. So let's just do a point a plane that passes through this point. If I can select it, it's not giving me that point. I'm going to have to rotate it a little bit. There we go. This point, that point, and uh, this point. So now I've got a plane, and you can see that it is a fairly oddly located plane. And so, um, yet another plane. Let me kill this one. Let's try a different one, and then we'll. I'll just encourage you to play with it and become better at it. Let me create a plane that is related to this circular surface. What can that mean? Okay. What it means is it's already selected. Is it is it is tangent to that surface. Okay. And so there's one relationship, and maybe I would like it to be tangent to that surface and pass through this point. And so we have it. If I should be able to flip it to the other side for the tangency, I can. So now we are tangent to this surface, passing through this point on the other side. If I delete this vertex, uh, maybe what I want to do is be tangent to that surface and at a specific angle from this surface of, uh, let's say, 35 degrees, uh, and I will flip it to the other direction. So now I'm tangent to the circle at a certain angle, and maybe I'm wanting to drill a hole through this part. 
uh, using this as a sketch plane. So I think you get the idea of uh, creating planes that can be extremely useful. Uh, even the very simple one, just offset from a surface, can be an extremely useful thing. Okay, the next thing on the list of uh, geometry and feature creation tools that I want to look at is the idea of a revolved boss and revolved cuts. And so I could do this lots of different ways, but I think I will go ahead and use the plane that I've created. I will click on Revolve Boss Base and that plane has already been selected and so my sketch is going to occur on that plane. I'm going to view perpendicular and now what I'm going to do is create a sketch. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to sketch, first of all, I'm going to sketch a center line. A center line is different than a solid line in that it doesn't create solid geometry but it's a tool, a tool used to do things. And so I'm going to place my center line on that edge that exists using that existing geometry and I'm going to let it snap up and become a vertical line. So there's my center line and now I'm going to create some geometry which will go from the point where I created the center line. It will attach itself to this base. I'm going to move up a bit. I'll move over at an angle, I'll move up, I'll move over. Notice some of the snaps that happen, the blue lines that project. I'm going to not accept any of those. I'll move up. I will actually move to the top of the center line that I created and back to the center line. And I will close this geometry by coming back to where I started. And now I'm done with that line. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I missed one. It's not showing up, but I'll just fill it in. And there it is. And so now I have that geometry. Of course, I could use Smart Dimension to dimension this height. And it's at 36. And I'll change it to a 40. And let's zoom out and back in just a little bit. And let's see. Smart Dimension, if I go from this edge to the center line Oops, let me see I must not have been a smart dimension from this edge to that center line this is going to give me that dimension of 22 I'll change it to 20 and I could continue dimensioning everything else but I'm not going to I'm going to accept my sketch now I started with a revolved boss base. Look at what it's done to this geometry. It knows that I have a center line in the part. So, and, and I only had one center line and it picked that as my axis of revolution. It's creating this revolved object. Okay, how far do I want to rotate? And see, you can see my sketch here has been revolved about a center line. Blind says 360 degrees, the typical answer, but I could go 180 degrees and get half the geometry. I could go 270 degrees and get three-fourths of the geometry, etc. I could make it a thin feature of about two millimeters. Uh, it's not showing it right now. Uh, let's let's actually see what that looks like. I'm curious. Uh, it's I've, okay. My geometry is too small to do a thin feature of two millimeters, 0.05 millimeters. Let's see if that works. If not, I'll abandon the thin. No, it doesn't want to do the thin right now. We'll play with that another time. So there is my object, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do a 360 degree revolution, and we have created that rotated solid piece that that would be called a revolved boss base or a revolved solid uh, if i wanted to i could do the same kind of thing in a cut and so i think let's see i will do a revolved cut and i will sketch on the sketching plane and view perpendicular and what I want to do is maybe just cut a little bit of a notch out of 
uh, this feature. Let me see if I can see this axis I, of, of this part. I can't, so I want to turn on a feature that I haven't shown you before. I've got my menu pinned to be always here. Let's go with View, Temporary Axes. Now I can see the center line of that circular thing. I can see the center line of this thing. And so I'm now going to draw. Let me zoom in quite a bit. And what I'm going to do is draw an arc. We haven't done that yet. I'm just going to do a very simple arc and place it on this surface and bring it in to there. And then I'm going to draw a line which connects the two points on the arc. This is my cut and that's going to be the center line and I'm doing a revolve cut so I should be cutting a circular groove out of the top of this part. So with this sketch done axis of revolution. It would, since I don't have an axis in the sketch itself, it was part of other geometry, I'm going to click in this axis of revolution box and select that axis. Uh, let's see, and it looks like it got it. And now it is showing the cut that I'm proposing to make. And I'm going to go ahead and simply accept this one. And so now we have done a revolved cut. And so our sketches can be as simple or as complicated as we want for revolved bosses, and they can be as simple or complicated as we want for revolved cuts. The next tool I want to look at is under the Features tab using fillets, or if I press this arrow, fillets are chamfers, but let's play with fillets first. So I'll click on the fillet tool. And we'll look at what it does and let's just do a very simple fillet. I'm going to put fillets around that face. Let's see if it will, oops, uh, a 10 millimeter fillet. No, I'm going to do a 2 millimeter fillet because 10 was too big. Let's see if that'll get the job done. Nope, we're going to do this a little bit out of practice. What we're going to do is fillet this edge if I can grab it uh, constant radius okay fillets take two it went into a different mode when I clicked on that face I'm gonna click on fillet and I'm going to click on it comes up as face fillet I'm not sure why constant radius now it's gonna let me click on that edge and I can see what it's proposing to do it's proposing to round off that edge and I will click on that edge as well, and that edge as well, and that edge. And we ought to be able to bump this up to maybe a fillet of size even three or four. Let's try three. And I will accept that fillet. And you can see that I have rounded off the top of this entire face. Let me uh, click on fillet again. And I'm going to click on this edge and this edge and move all the way, oops, sorry, I apparently am not in fillet. Okay, so I have that edge, and that edge, and this edge, and that edge. That's a three millimeter fillet as well. Uh, let's try a four millimeter fillet. And we will accept that. And so you can see how fillets will take um, edges which are the intersect of, intersection of multiple surfaces and put in circular geometry and blend them together very nicely making a smooth, smooth transition between them. Um, I will fillet this edge of the cone. Four millimeters looks like a fairly nice number. Let's see if that computes out okay. It appears that it does so I've now rounded off this corner let's uh, fill it that one and that one both of them at two millimeters and I will accept that and I think you're trying starting to get the idea of what a fillet will do and so I have rounded off both of those corners uh, let's take a look at a chamfer, very much like a fillet, except it makes more triangular or planar transitions 
rather than uh, circular transitions. So I'm going to put a chamfer. Uh, oops, I clicked on fillet. I click on the arrow and I will go to chamfer and I will click on that edge. And that's a 10 millimeter chamfer. I don't want to do that. Let's go with a two millimeter chamfer. Having clicked on that edge and this edge and we will just get all the edges of the part and there are more sophisticated ways to do lots of this things if my chamfer were too large it might actually impinge on this hole uh, although that probably works let's see what we get okay and so i think you can see the difference between a chamfer and a fillet which is more rounded The next item on the list of feature creation tools that I want to show you is something called the linear pattern. And a linear pattern is a way to replicate lots of uh, replicate geometry and make lots and lots of copies. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the hole that I created earlier. Move up here. I'm going to click on linear pattern. And it's a fairly busy dialog box over here for creating linear patterns. There's first, first of all a direction one. It wants to know what direction to move the copies of the hole as it creates them. And what I need to typically do is find an edge or a line that uh, it will move the holes parallel to. So clicking in this box, although it's already blue, I'm going to click on this edge. And it says let's make, it for now believes, three copies because it says three right here. Okay, let's make three copies with a 30 millimeter spacing. Uh, but let's flip the direction of the copies to make them actually go into the part. And so with this, I have created three holes parallel to this edge uh, that are spaced at 30 millimeters apiece. I can accept that. And those are my three holes. But I can get a bit more sophisticated. Right click, edit feature. Let's now look at direction number two. And in direction number two, I will click in the direction box. And in direction two, I would like to make copies. And I'd like to make two copies at a 25 millimeter spacing. So when I click out of there, there they are, but they're hanging in air. And so, uh, let's see, I will reverse that direction. And now I have three copies this way and two copies that way. And I will accept those holes and very quickly made a very nice linear pattern. Uh, let's go edit it again with the edit feature. And I'm going to change this into four copies. And they're getting a little bit close to that edge. So let's change this to a 22. Okay, that's fine. But these holes are getting into this feature right here. I really don't want those two holes. So I'm going to pull down here to instances to skip. And when I do that, do you see the purple dots? I'm going to click on that one's purple dot. If I can get to it, move in. That one. And that one. And those two copies are now gone. And so I will accept that pattern. And let's see. Let's look at something. Now, remember my holes were through all. And so when I copied these holes into this region, the through all characteristic continued. If I didn't want that to happen, then I would probably need to go back and actually let me try it now that I see it. Let me go back to this hole, edit the feature, and instead of doing a, let's see, end condition through all, let's do a blind up to surface, and I'm going to pick that surface. Let's see if this works or does it bring everything to its knees. That worked and now notice this hole does not cut through that triangular part. 
So I've changed the nature of the part a little bit by going back and editing an earlier part. Okay, uh, the pattern that I just did was a pattern of a single uh, element feature. I'm actually going to delete this pattern. Uh, delete. Yes. And instead, I'm going to pattern something else. What I'm going to pattern, let's uh, see what I want to do. I am going to pattern this thing. Now, this block piece was a piece that goes all the way through the part. Uh, this entire thing goes all the way through the part. But I'm going to pattern that piece by saying, first of all, let's, let's find it. I'm going to go to the model tree. And I see that when I point to boss extrude number 9, that highlights. But it also has a fillet on the top. And when I find it, I'm going to hold down Control and click on that fillet. And then I'm going to point to fillet number 2. And when I point to it, I notice that highlights. So I want to do that fillet. And I also have a chamfer down there. And so I'm going to control, and I'm going to skip f these fillets because they have nothing to do with that feature. But I'm going to click on, control click on that chamfer. I have all of those things selected. And it's all of that stuff that I want to pattern. And so I'm going to go with linear pattern. It shows all of those features to be patterned in this box. Direction number one, I want to pattern parallel to that line. It's showing three of them. 30 millimeters is too small. Let's see what 50 millimeters looks like. So there are three of them in that direction. And if I wanted to, I could make some in direction number two as well. And let's go parallel to that line. It only shows a one down here. Let's put two of them in that direction. And let's use a spacing of, let's see, how does that look? That's a little too close together. So let's go with 30. Uh, I think that looks better. And I will accept that linear pattern. And so now we've taken what is some fairly complicated pieces of geometry and made multiple copies of it. So we're not limited to patterning a single feature. It is interesting that, uh, let's see, we created a hole that went through this feature but that hole was a separate thing entirely and it did not then propagate through all of these others what if I wanted this hole to be a part of my pattern well I can actually go take care of that after the fact we will go edit the pattern and I will zoom in on this feature and click on the hole and accept it and now each one of these items in my pattern has the hole and now remember my hole stopped when it hit sort of the interior edge of the surface so that hole goes through this piece but the hole does not go into that piece so we're getting some interesting interactions that's a linear pattern uh, one other thing to point out, I've actually got a, a, a warning on my linear pattern. It says edge for fillet or chamfer does not exist. What's happening is you can see this chamfer at the bottom of this one, the chamfer at the bottom of this one that exists along this long edge. Uh, what's happening is this copy is buried inside of the cylinder and the entire edge along here for this block part, buried in the si inside the cylinder, there's no edge for the chamfer to exist on. And so it's warning me that, uh, and the same thing is true of the fillet that's at the top of the part. And so we can either live with that warning, or what I might do is edit definition. Let's just see if this fixes it, because I think it ought to. Let me just say that I don't actually want that one. So instances to skip, and I will skip that one. Let's see if that warning goes away. I think that may solve all issues. Warning, okay, I'm running out of memory. Oh, well. Yes, we will continue. And so my warning on my pattern has gone away. 
because now I don't have a uh, problem with that geometry. I could keep the geometry if I wanted to. And that's linear patterns. Okay, now I want to take a look at a circular pattern. It's very simple, similar to the uh, linear pattern that we just saw, uh, but instead it creates copies that move around in a circular direction. And let's see, I may actually have deleted the linear pattern uh, while I was pausing it and off the screen, but that linear pattern is now gone. And so I'm going to select this feature. Uh, I got the plane, don't want to do that, which was that boss extrude number seven. And I'm going to bring down the area er arrow under linear pattern and select circular pattern. And it's a circular pattern needs an axis to circle about. And so the axis of this uh, circle right here is visible. This is blue, so I don't even need to click on it. I will click on that axis. And it uh, presumes I want to create copies 360 degrees around that axis. And it presumes that I wanted eight of them. Let's change it to five of them. So we'll do fewer. Uh, and so there is a pattern of a single feature. If there were multiple aspects of this feature, I could have selected multiple things. Uh, there is that pattern. Let's go ahead and take it back to eight. And I will accept that. Uh, my system's getting low on memory. I'm going to have to accept that as well because I don't have time to put memory in. And so we see that it created those around a circle. And these two maybe are not actually desirable. So I will go back and right click on the circular pattern, edit the feature, and pull down to instances to skip. Blue box is selected. And so I will skip that instance. And I will skip that instance that interferes with this part. And I will select my modified circular pattern. and. Uh, so you see how that behaves. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and combine a circular pattern and a linear pattern. And to make that work a little bit better, uh, I'm going to take this boss extrude. And actually, I don't even have to edit it. I could do it two ways. Let's find it. Right click, edit the feature. And I extruded it to 44 millimeters. I could change this to uh, 80 millimeters if I wish and accept it is one way to change that geometry. But in general, if I just double click on geometry that's been created, it'll bring up dimensions that were involved in creating it. Now I can take that 80, double click on it, and let's change that to 120. Now it doesn't instantly update the part, so I'm going to move up here to the traffic light, which says rebuild. And when I click on rebuild, that part is now. Uh, longer. And so now what I'm going to do is take this uh, circular pattern, select it, and make a linear pattern from the circular pattern. And I want it to move upward. I want it to move parallel to that axis. So I'll click on the axis. It's saying two copies. Let's make three copies. And let's space them at about a 40 millimeter spacing. But we need to go the other way. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, we that looks like that's going to look pretty good. So I will accept that. And we have combined a circular pattern, and then we've done a linear pattern out of the circular pattern. The next feature creation tool that I want to look at is something called a mirror. It will uh, have us designate a plane and geometry, and it'll create the mirror image of that geometry about that plane. And so I think the geometry that I want to mirror, first of all, would be this circle, circular boss, and this triangular feature. So I held down Control, clicked on both of them, and now I'm going to go find the mirror command. Let's see, this mirror features, and it also appears here. Same thing, can get to it either way, either under the linear pattern or, oops, lost my part. So I'll click on the circle, control click on that one. Should give me both of those. I click on mirror and the face that I, oh, okay. Didn't do quite what I wanted. It picked, that is the face to mirror about, and this is the geometry. I don't want that. I'm going to clear the face to mirror about, click in features to mirror, 
and click on uh, that extrude thin and the face that I want to mirror about is I'm going to actually make a slight mistake that face and let me accept it and when I look at it I can see it did create those but this thing is sort of floating in air okay and the reason is this cylinder went all the way to the bottom of this feature so I really want to reflect rather than since this cylinder goes to the bottom face when I reflect about that it uh, let's see no I'm sorry this feature stopped at this bottom face so I was reflecting about the wrong plane let me go fix it mirror and let's mirror about the top face and now things should connect in a little bit better and so I've got the cylinder and I've got this extruded thin that I'd created earlier it made a copy and as a mirror image over on the other side what if I had wanted to also copy some of these extrudes and other things or the uh, the pattern uh, let me go add that to the mirror I'll right click on the mirror edit the feature and now I don't have easy access to all these other things but if I go over here I've got another copy of the model tree that's sort of shaded and now let me go find my circular let's see features to mirror I want to click in there my circular pattern and my linear pattern let's see if it will let me have all of that and now I will accept those changes and you can see the amount of geometry that I have created very quickly so I have mirrored the cylinder the thin and my linear and circular pattern I have mirrored them over to the other side of the part that's the mirror tool okay the next thing I want to show is a swept boss or base and that would show up let's see where is it a swept boss or base and to do that, I'm, my geometry is just too crowded, so I'm going to say File, Save that big ugly part, and Close that part, and Create a new part, OK. And then I will create some initial geometry for us to work with, so I'm going to just extrude a flat plate us to live on for a little while and I'll put a rectangle there I am gonna be sloppy and I'm not gonna dimension anything right now uh, and I'll just pull that out to an interesting thickness and I'll say there is that part and that part was created on the front plane um, and now what I want to do is is I've got a little bit more work to do to create a sweep and so what I want to do is draw a sketch. I think I want to create a plane. So let me go to reference geometry and plane. And my first reference, I'm going to grab the center of that line. And center of that line will be another reference. And I'm going to take this plane and it will end up being perpendicular to that third plane you know I think for what I'm about to do that is going to be perfectly fine and so I will accept that and now I have my block and a plane that I can sketch on and now uh, to do a swept cut I'm gonna need two different sketches because a sweep is taking a sketch which forms a cross section and pull that uh, cross section not along a straight line that would be an extruded boss base don't pull it along a perfect circle or an arc of a circle that would be a, a revolve pull it along some other path and so I need to have both a cross section and I need to have a path and so I'm going to then create a sketch on my top face. I will view 
perpendicular to it and my sketch is going to be just anything I want and so maybe I'll use a group of lines and so there is one of my sketches and now I'm going to do another sketch in the plane that I created just pull that in a little bit and let's see let's view perpendicular and I'm going to have and I'm going to use a tool that I haven't shown you yet it's called the spline we will look at this a lot more next week but I'm going to have that spline uh, go from here and what a spline is it creates a curve and so I will have it then go there. And, th and the first two points, it just creates a straight line. And then after that, any other additional points creates a curve. And I'm going to hit escape, and that will end that spline for me. Um, and I think I would like this spline to be tangent to this surface. So let me see if I can actually make that happen. Uh, I will click on the spline and I will click on the surface. Oops, control click on the two. And uh, it looks like it's right now, it's not going to let me make it tangent. We're going to go with this. And so I have a spline curve, I have, which will be the path for the extrude. I have my sketch, and now I'm going to go click, and I'm going to go ahead and select both of them. Let's see what I get, and I'm going to click on Swept Both Base, and it says, first of all, it says Profile and Path. I point to this one. It says Profile, which is my sketch number two down here. This one is my Path box, and... I can see the geometry that it's going to create. Let's just go ahead and accept that. And so I have, we can see the cross section that has been dragged along this curve. Uh, that's, there are many other options we could deal with in the sweep. Let's go back to edit feature. Let me see if there's really anything that I want to deal with. Let's just see what's under options. Okay, we can do some twisting kind of orientations. I'm not going to play with that. Guide curves. We could put some additional guide curves on how this thing works. I'm not going to play with that right now for today. I think we've got enough in a sweep. Start and end tangency. Uh, let's see. Let's say, what does path tangent do? No, that doesn't really change anything. We're just going to leave that alone. Um, so there is one sweep that was made with a sketch that has some curves to it. We could also do a sweep that would involve a series of straight lines. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to cheat just a little bit by clicking on this plane and doing another sketch. And in this plane... Let's see, let me view perpendicular, that way I really am more comfortable with what I'm doing. Let's zoom this way, and I'm going to have my path for a new sweep start on that plane, move straight out, and move to there, and move to there. Hit escape. That's my sketch. I'm going to use that as a path. For another sweep but I'm going to use the same original let's see let me find it sketch 2 so I'll control select sketch 2 and sketch 4 and if I do a sweep using this cross section from sketch 2 with this path let's go ahead and click on swept boss base and I'm simply going to accept it. And you can see the difference in 
uh, this sweep following a series of segmented straight lines as opposed to a sweep following a smooth curve. And I think that's all we'll say about sweeps for this week because we are uh, getting pretty long this week. Okay, last week at the end of uh, my class, I showed the shell command very briefly. Again, a way to take existing geometry and do some fairly something fairly sophisticated. So I'm going to click on the shell command. And the shell command has a primary box that says faces to remove. Well, I want to remove that face from this area. And I click on the check mark. Now this is going to be doing a very busy thing. As a matter of fact, we can't really see everything that's happening, but all of the geometry that's connected now has a wall thickness. Uh, the size of the wall thickness I made for the shell. Let's go back and edit the feature. And we had a 0.1. Let's put a 0.05 in there, make it a bit thinner. Accept it. Okay, by removing this face, I can peek inside of here and I can see the, the geometry that's been created. Let me edit again and remove a few more faces. So let's remove this face and this face. And so we have turned this uh, sweep from a solid thing into a thin thing. But you know, if we peek in here, we really can't see it. But what has really, it's very hard to see actually, but this entire box has become hollow and this entire cube sweep has become hollow even though we can't see it. I will go back and edit this and let's go ahead and uncap that end. And we see that all of this has become thin. Our box is hollow. Uh, and let's see, maybe the best way to see it is let's just do a cut and see what's going on in this thing. So I'm going to do an extrude cut and I'm going to sketch on uh, this plane and I'm going to line it up. That's fine. And my cut is just going to be fairly crude thing. It's going to be uh, a big box. That's sort of cheating and crude, but I'm just going to go with it anyway. I'll accept that. Doing a through all cut. And let's see what geometry is left behind bodies to keep all bodies okay what it's done is it's separated some of the bodies so I can see that that box had become hollow I can see this tube had become hollow because of the shell let me go my, uh, modify my uh, no I think it's probably enough I can just see the effect of the shell a little bit better okay another uh, geometry creation feature I want to show you now is called the draft and basically a draft is a way of putting tapers into geometry and the reason it exists primarily is to allow you to make molds where you can pull the part out so that things don't get uh, geometrically stuck inside the mold and so usually tapers will help allow you to or drafts or what the tapers are called will allow you to pull a part out of a uh, out of a mold so I'm going to click on draft and we're going to go with this thing called a neutral plane draft. We're not going to go into this very deeply. And so the plane that I don't want to change, I'll make that my neutral plane. I'll click on the top. And the faces that I want to draft would be that face, that face, and that, and that. And let's just see what effect a 10 degree draft would have. Remember that's a selected that top one is my neutral and I selected the edges what does the draft do it has made all of the faces around the perimeter of this thing now have an angle to them they're no longer perpendicular to this top face 
and so I've put a 10 degree draft on that. We'll go edit it and change the draft angle to 20 degrees. It'll be a little more extreme. You can see it better. And so you can see the effect that the draft command had. And the final feature creation tool of the day that we're going to play with, a very, very easy one called the dome. I'm going to click on the dome command. And I'm going to click on pretty much any face that I find interesting. So I'll click on that face. It's a little bit slow. And I can see, because this face is actually a little complicated because it's got this piece here, uh, it has added... Well, this one doesn't like it. I picked a face that had too much stuff on it. Let's, let's bail out of that. We'll pick a much simpler face. Let's pick this rectangular face and dome it. And you can see it adds curvature to it. I'm a quarter inch dome, fairly extreme dome on this surface. And it has placed a dome on that surface. Let's try putting a dome on that surface. I think it'll do it just fine. And now, quarter inch may be too much. Let's put a uh, 0.05 inch dome on there. Let's see if it'll do it. Let's take a closer look at that surface by zooming in. And we see that although the surface is fairly complicated, it has put a significant sort of curved dome on that surface. Let's try one more. Let's put a dome on that surface. And see what it looks like. Now, obviously, surfaces that are more rectangular or circular would dome more easily. Let's see if we can put a touch more on that one. Point one, will it work? It may, it may fail. We'll see. Well, this one is, it's there. I can see some curve on that surface, but it just doesn't show up. Uh, it doesn't show up very well on that surface. So I'll do one more simple and obvious one. Let's dome that surface and accept it. And we can see that it's put a bit of a curved bump out on that surface. And that ends the uh, features that I want to talk about, feature creation tools that I want to talk about for today. Uh, you will have homework to work on. Uh, next week we're going to get into... Uh, more detail in the sketcher and especially talking about relations and constraints and those kinds of things and uh, something about design intent.